Um, our APIs are used as a way to share our weather data with uh, a whole developer community, and then they're also used to power our own apps and web pages. Um, actually, yeah, we kind of we looked at the Netflix uh, eat your own dog food kind of model, and once our APIs reached a maturity level, recognized they were actually a great tool for internal development as well. And so now all of our mobile apps use our APIs, our web pages use our APIs, and we've actually been able to speed up our web pages by using uh, our APIs to load data points individually instead of waiting for the back end to render the whole web page. Yeah, it really has actually. Uh, we have a whole team working on a new API back end as part of the weather company, um, consolidating the weather data sources for across the whole company which is going to really benefit all of the different components of the weather company by making that data easily accessible via APIs. Um, and so a lot of our influence has come in what that product is shaping up to be and how the public is going to be able to access this new data set. Sure, um, a lot of that comes from not infringing on other business models that other parts of the company might have. Um, and really being able to show them the usefulness of having a public API. And I think a lot of, our, a lot of the ways that I would uh, measure success are based on some of the larger enterprise deals that we've made. Uh, we power weather on Facebook, we power weather in Snapchat, um, and we work with a lot of large companies that wouldn't have happened if we didn't have an API so easily accessible by the general public. And so I think as kind of a lead gen, and a way to get enterprise deals, it's a good way to convince the company that it's valuable to have a public API. Well, right now, currently all of our data is consumed by the developer for display within their app or in a kind of weather decision product. Um, but we actually have within our Weather Underground app, we have crowdsourced weather check-ins, kind of, um, where people can look at the current conditions and agree or disagree. Uh, particularly when it comes to things like cloudiness or rain. Um, and we also have hazard reports as part of the app, and those are all API-driven into that new central data source I spoke of. And so now we're going to get to the point of exposing that to the public as well and sharing a concept of a weather check-in. And so then we'll really have a two-way data exchange with our developers. We're definitely trying to get into a, a social uh, weather component. Uh, our app does it. The weather.com app has a weather check-in as well. And those are both going into the same data source. And so um, those are actually starting to influence how we display our own current conditions. If you get enough social check-ins in an area, we'll change the current conditions based on what the people are saying as opposed to what the, uh, you know, the local airport might be saying. So far, our best, has, uh, our best tip or trick has been working with the community. We have forums, we allow people to interact with us, we get, make sure we get back to people, um, and we listen to what they have to say about the APIs. Uh, we're not customizing the API per individual request, but once you start to get a consensus of something that's really a problem to a lot of people, in the next version of the API or maybe a, a V2 on a new feature, you can really address what's been a burden to the developer community. So I'd say just listening to the people using the API and then using that feedback when you iterate is, is really valuable. Well, we've taken a lot of um, influence from kind of the agile methodology of having people from different teams all be part of the same team. And so uh, we have myself, the product owner, we have product marketing, and then we have uh, front-end developers, back-end developers, and then we also work with our IT team to make sure we're taking advantage of the latest technologies. And by working with the IT team and working in the cloud, now we can take advantage of elasticity because weather, um, as you know, as everybody knows, changes all the time. <laughs> and so we can have a beautiful day like today where no one cares about the weather. And then you can have a nor'easter and the whole East Coast cares about weather. So you really need that flexibility and you need the IT team to be able to understand the importance of that elasticity in the cloud. I love APIs because I've been with the Weather Underground for 11 years and prior to working with our API, I did a lot of customization in working with companies like Hearst and newspaper companies, companies like CBS as well, where everyone I worked with, I had to make a custom feed for them, a custom web display, a custom CSV, whatever it was, always custom. And so the API has really allowed us to kind of standardize our data um, and expose it in a way that people can reuse the data in the way that they see best, instead of me having to make a whole web page or a fresh XML for every new client. 
So I love the standardization and the one size fits most. 